Dear students, I am back with my new video with some more interesting concepts of physics. As we have discussed waves in our earlier videos, today also we are going to learn some other concepts associated with waves. So let's begin with the first topic as you see here the reflection of waves. Dear students, as you have studied in the earlier classes that light gets reflected from opaque surfaces. In the similar fashion, waves are also having the property to get reflect. So dear students, wave gets reflected differently in case of fixed end and in case of free end. Now let me tell you, the fixed end is an end which is unable to move and a free end is an end which is free to move. Now let's talk about the reflection of wave from fixed end. As an example of fixed end, here I have taken a wall to which I have tied a rope. The other end of the rope is free to move. So this fixed end or wall is also called rigid support. So what I am going to do here is I am going to hold this free end and I am going to give an upward jerk. So a wave pulse or a crest travels towards this rigid support. Here is our pulse which is continuously traveling towards the fixed end. Situation number 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. When it strikes to the fixed end, it gets reflected and travels in the opposite direction. In case of this reflection of wave from a fixed end, we can observe an important fact here that when the wave pulse reaches the fixed end or a rigid support, it suffers a phase change of 180 degrees or in this case you can see the wave pulse which is in the upper region, it flips down. So many students may get this kind of doubt that why it is suffering a phase change of 180 degrees. Actually, when the wave pulse continuously travels towards the fixed end and when it reaches the fixed end, it exerts an upward force on the fixed end and from Newton's third law, an equal and opposite force is exerted on the rope, mean in the downward direction. So the wave pulse suffers a phase change of 180 degree, mean it flips down. You may get a doubt here that why there is an upward force on the rigid support because in the beginning itself we have given an upward jerk so every upcoming particle experiences a force in the upward direction so in the similar manner there is an upward force on the fixed end. As you can see the statement here when a wave gets reflected from a rigid support it suffers a phase change of 180 degrees. Now let's talk about the reflection of wave from a free end. So when a wave continuously travels towards the free end, when it strikes to the free end, it does not suffer any phase change. As the support itself is free to move, and it is not able to exert any force on the rope so that the wave does not flip down or it does not suffer any phase change. As you can see, a crest is continuously traveling towards the free end. When it strikes to the free end, the same crest is reflecting back. You can have a look at the statement. When a wave gets reflected from a free end, it does not suffer any phase change. So now let's move towards our next topic that is superposition principle. So students, let me tell you one thing, if you are going through waves, the superposition principle is a very important topic. So basically, the superposition principle is used to find the resultant displacement of a particle when it is under two or more than two disturbances. 
and that y1 is the displacement due to the first wave and y2 is the displacement due to the second wave then to find the resultant displacement we can simply add them this superposition principle states that when two or more waves of the same type crosses at same point the resultant displacement is the sum is simply the sum of the displacements due to each individual wave that is y is equals to y1 plus y2 plus y3 as y1 is the displacement due to the first wave and y2 is the displacement due to the second wave and y3 is the displacement due to the third wave and so on as you can see clearly from the diagram that two waves are traveling in opposite direction and crossing at the same point so at the point of crossing the displacement is more that is the displacement due to both these waves that is nothing but the resultant displacement yr is equal to y1 plus y2 so after crossing the common point they continue to travel in the same direction as this wave is initially traveling towards left after crossing the common point it continuously travels towards left and it is traveling towards right after crossing to the common point it continuously travels towards right one more important point about superposition principle is the phase difference between the two waves that is the resultant displacement depends upon the phase difference or the phase between the waves now let's have a look on the resultant displacement when two waves are combined together so this is the first example where we are having two waves of same amplitude and same wavelength but the phase difference between them is zero mean there is no difference in their phase so when they are added together the amplitude increases but in the second case of course we are having two waves of same amplitude and same wavelength but there is a phase difference between the waves that is 180 degrees so the displacement of first is cancelled by the second so the final displacement or resultant displacement is equals to zero. So students, the next term that we are going to learn here is wave velocity. You can also call phase velocity. So we can define the wave velocity in a very simple manner. A wave velocity is nothing but the velocity with which a wave propagates or move forward in the space. We can define this wave velocity in another way as the wave velocity is the rate at which the phase of the wave propagates in space. So we can have so many phases just like crest or trough. So according to this definition, the wave velocity is the velocity with which this crest is moving forward in the space. Now we shall derive the equation for wave velocity. So let's begin with the displacement equation that is y is equal to a sin kx minus omega t. This is the displacement of a particle under a periodic wave. The term that you see under sin kx minus omega t is called argument and it is always constant. So kx minus omega t is equal to constant. Now, we are going to differentiate this equation with respect to time. So, k is a constant. So, let's keep it as it is. Now, differentiating x with respect to time gives me dx by dt minus omega angular frequency is constant. So, let's keep it as it is. Now, differentiating time with respect to time gives me dt by dt. That is equals to 0. Because... The differentiation of constant is equal to 0. Now, displacement per time is equal to velocity. Already we know. But here, the velocity is wave velocity or phase velocity. So that we can represent it as Vp minus omega. dt by dt is 1 and that is equal to 0. I can send this minus term that side so that it becomes positive. Now you can see. 
k into vp is equals to omega now vp is equals to omega by k we know that omega is equals to 2 pi nu and k is equals to 2 pi by lambda substituting those two equations in vp we can get vp is equals to nu lambda that is so called wave velocity or universal wave equation or you can also call phase velocity hmm. i really thank for your cooperation and for your patience so with the same positivity let's finish the last and final topic of our video so finally we go with angular frequency so dear students in the previous videos we have learned what frequency is so frequency gives me an idea about how many cycles have completed in a given time but on the other hand angular frequency gives me an information about how many degrees or how many radians has completed in a given unit time if you see carefully the first case the 45 degrees has completed just in one second so to complete 360 degrees it would take four seconds so its angular frequency is set to be low but in the second case in one second 180 degrees has completed so to complete 360 degrees it would take two seconds only but in the third case in one second 360 degrees has completed so in the final case in the third case the angular frequency is set to be more once again thank you so much for your cooperation and for your patience if you like the video you can share it in the comment section